Are you working with somebody that's in VMware and they want to know what the cost of running an Azure would be, but they don't want you to install an Azure Migrate appliance in order to create an estimate? We're going to walk through using an RV tool export to create an Azure calculator estimate in today's MS Cloud Bros video. Hey, Jeremy Wallace here, Microsoft Certified Trainer and Principal Cloud Architect. Today, we're going to go over using a manual export like using RV tools. And we're not going to go over the, the export process, but we're going to take the results of an RV tools dump, which essentially exports all of the specs from your VMware environment into a spreadsheet. And we're going to look at that spreadsheet and see how we can create a manual estimate in the Azure Calculator for that environment. I understand this is a much more manual process than using things like Azure Migrate or something more automated that can do those cost estimations. But that's the world we live in. This is an important skill to have because some people uh, can't install those tools. They want to just give you an export, especially if you're involved in kind of that sales estimation process as you're trying to determine a project or if you're just curious yourself. And so this is a great, great thing to, to have down is being able to create these manual Azure calculator cost estimates and on how to read an RV tools export. So let's dive right in. So here I have open a spreadsheet that contains my RV tools dump information. So essentially this is just a spreadsheet that has all of the resources that are inside my VMware environment exported here for me to see the particular information about each of them. So this main info page has pretty much all of that info kind of spread out. So if I scroll over to the side here, I can see the resource allocation to it. So CPUs, memory, NICs, disks, whether it had multiple disks or not attached to it, and then the overall capacity. But if I wanted to dive into more information such as the about the disk, I could dive in and take a look at, okay, so this particular server had an ECF G drive and how big each of those disks were. So it does give you more of a breakdown on each of these tabs if you need any, any particular information. So we're going to use this along with in here, there's some notes. So we can automatically rule out, for instance, the vSphere cluster services. These, these are things that are specific to VMware. So we can automatically highlight those as something that we are not going to need to quote in this estimate. So you can find that on annotations. If it has any annotations, you can also find the operating system that's running in here. So any of the operating systems you don't know about, you may need a flag, a highlight as uh, needing to get more information. We're going to focus right now on the Windows one. So these are Windows Server 2019, Windows Server 2012 that are listed in here. So with that said, we're going to want to pull up the Azure calculator. So you can go into a browser uh, and you can navigate to the calculator. Easy way is just the uh, Google Azure calculator and brings you right to the link to get there. We're going to start with a blank estimate. If you've never created an estimate before, these are products that are listed out in Azure that you can add to an estimate to figure out what the running cost is for it. Since we're doing RV tools, we're, we're trying to see what that like, VMware infrastructure would look like running on Azure cost-wise. We're mainly focusing on virtual machines. So we can see a virtual machine right here. If you were able to find it, you can just simply do a search for it. Hit add to estimate that will throw it down into the estimate area down below. And then we can uh, adjust it to, to match what we find in the RV tools dump. So first thing you want to do is name your overall estimate. So I'm going to say Contoso mm -hmm. estimate. And then we have our virtual machine here. Good practice is indicate what virtual machine you're currently working on specking out. So I'm just going to choose one further down in here to make it interesting. So let's say server 10. So let me name this server 10. Sir 10, I saw that it was a Windows operating system region, just whatever region you're dealing with. In, in my particular case here, I want to use the East US region because that's where it's going to be built out. But, you know, of course, if, if they're on the West Coast, then you're probably going to look at West US too. If they're up in the Seattle region, West US, if they're down more in the California region, West US 3 is the Arizona type region there. So yeah, keep in mind what region when you're creating these estimates, because prices do matter when selecting region. So we have our selected region, East US, Windows, type OS only. You can, there is a, if you're building out a SQL server and you want to consider the SQL licensing inside the cost, you can run, you can select the SQL server type here, or if you're just doing OS only, 
keep it on standard there category. Now, the category here is for if you are doing a specialized workload. So if it's CPU intensive, you're going to choose like a, a compute optimized side. If it's more memory intensive, you're going to do memory optimized, or if it's a GPU workload or it's general purpose. For this one, since we don't really know what it is, we're going to just select general purpose. And again, now you can communicate with whoever you got this environment from and ask them what the, the purpose of the server is. But, you know, we're just trying to get a general cost for them based on the size that's there. And we could get more specific with, with things if we need to. Typically, the times that you want to get more specific is if you do notice if it's a SQL server or um, some type of database application server system. All right, so general purpose. Now, the instance series, you can narrow it down here. There's, there's multiple ways to use. You can leave this on all, and then you can search. You can just, you know, type in. Like if I wanted from a D series, I could put D4. It's going to be my four virtual CPUs. And it's going to show me all, all of the ones that have four in it. So four or 48. And I can kind of search that way, or you can narrow it down here on this side. So we can take a look at kind of all holistically and dive in that way, or we can narrow it down by series. This particular one, I'm just going to narrow it down by series. We're already general purpose. So these are general purpose sizes, sizes that we're dealing with. I like to work within the D series and the latest version. So the DASV5 series is a, a good series that I like to use. So let's go ahead and select that. And then I want to select for this particular server we're taking a look at. Let's dive over to CPU. So we have just highlight this so it makes it easier for us. All right. So we're looking at four CPUs. 16 gigabytes memory, only has one disk. So I'll plug that information in here. So I want four cores. So here's my D4 ASV5, four cores, 16 gigabyte RAM. That looks good to me. You can see the, the series size, the, the ASV5 does not have a temporary storage disk attached to it. So if you need that for whatever reason, then you're going to want to choose a different series. I think like if we take a look at, was it? Yeah, the DAS V4 here, it does have temporary storage disks that are attached. And so that's all with a whole other thing that we can go down on talking about temporary storage disks, but just keep that in mind with the series that you have on depending on what your needs are. So back here for CPU, 16 gigabyte RAM, I'm gonna select that. So we've, so now we've matched up a general purpose sized virtual machine with the CPU and memory that's needed. Now we need to take in consideration the OS disk. Real quick about some of the stuff you see here. I'm only dealing with one virtual machine on this particular input that I am. I'm going to select all the virtual machines as its own individual line item in this estimate. And then 730 hours is the average uh, hours for the month. So just go ahead and leave that there. Times that you would, this number is that if you're dealing with identical web servers, server one, web one, two, three, all same exact specs. You could just code, put in here once, put the instance count up to the number of servers that match that. So pay as you go. That's typically what you're going to want to stick it on initially to show them just the, the normal pay as you go rate. So you can see for this particular instance size, that's 259.88 a month on, on average. Now, when giving estimates, you typically want to start with pay as you go rate that the, we threw the, threw it up in Azure today. This is what it would be. But if you want to commit to a three, three year re reservation uh, for that particular workload, you can discount it up to 60, 60%. Um, or if you want to do a one year reserve, or if you want to take a look at some savings plans options there. So there are different cost factors to consider, uh, but you typically want to start with pay as you go as your baseline, just to show them here's what the, the, the standard running rate of this workload as it is right now. And then here's how you can bring it down. Manage disk. This is where we want to put the OS disk. So anything that's in production, definitely recommend premium SSD for that. If you know it's like just a test VM or, you know, dev, you can choose a lower performing tier, but premium SSD for anything production is what's recommended. And then we saw that this was like 90 something gigabytes. So our options in here are 64, 128. So we go 128, that which is accommodating of that. And then this is going to be one disk for the OS disk. Now, what happens if it has multiple disks? Well, you don't want to do that here because those the data disks are probably going to be a different size. 
than the OS disk. So I recommend the, the built-in managed disk area that's on this estimate just be used for that, that C drive, that, that OS disk. And then what we can do is we can go back up here and let's search for disk. And select manage this, add to estimate. And then now you can specify. So say this now server 10 didn't have one, but let's take a look at server 13 did have multiple disks. And I have different names in here because this is a mock file, a mock account. So let's pretend that it was this data disk here. So 153. For this D drive, so I'm just going to name it Circuit MEO2. D drive disk, you know, or however you want to so put that name. And then again, premium SSD, at least for production environments, and then a matching size for that data disk. If it was a terabyte, et cetera, well, in this particular case, it was. 153 gigs, so 256 will be accommodating of that. So that's, that's what you want to do when approaching these estimates is you just want to, you want to get what can accommodate that workload. Now there's a whole different thing on optimizing it. That's, this is really why you want to look at Azure, the Azure migrate appliance or something that can analyze workloads and see if you can get tighter on that. But again. Uh, the purpose of this video was to show that you can't always have that as the case. So it's good to be able to come up with this manually using RV tools spreadsheet and, and be able to work uh, back and forth here and, and add individual servers and add individual disks to this estimate. And once you get those servers and disks all added, then you can export this to a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet is going to kind of lay out each of the costs as you've defined it. It's going to take a second pop up here. As you define it, so you can see that I added server 10 in here and I have my, my disk from MEO2 in here. And so it's giving my, my estimated monthly cost. It gives me notes in here about the sizes that I chose and the quantity, and then gives me my overall estimate monthly cost. So that's in a nutshell, how you build these estimates. Of course, you're going to go and, and pick everything that's inside the spreadsheet and build that out on that estimate. And as you do that, again, show the pay as you go rate, but maybe create a, a second estimate that shows, okay, now here's what if we had three year Azure reservations on these particular workloads that we know that are static. And then you can also, if, if you know different workloads, such as domain controllers, domain controllers, if there's nothing else on it and it's purely there for authentication, you, you don't necessarily need to stick a, like a general purpose D series size. You can use a burstable size, a B series burstable VM that is there essentially of what those burstable VMs are there for is that they're, they're mainly dormant VMs. And then they have little bursts of, of CPU utilization. So that's perfect for a domain controller one. That's all that it is acting as is just a, just a domain controller there for some authentication. Now, if you have other stuff on it, like files and things, and if you're going to Azure, you should probably move that stuff to Azure files separately, but that's a whole nother discussion. But again, you can start with just general purpose sized VMs just to get an idea of cost. And then you can look at how you can do cost savings through reservations and utilizing burstable sizes and maybe lower tiered performing stuff for any of your dev work environment.